So I recently came across an article that really reminded me just how important that link between molecular biology and, and clinical medicine is. The article was about a syndrome called Lee Fraumini, Lee Fraumini syndrome. Now, Lee Fraumini syndrome is a syndrome that where there's a mutation in one of the chromosomes and then a mutation in the second chromosome happens and then the cell doesn't isn't able to prevent itself from dividing and thus it creates tumors. Now, Lee Fraumini syndrome, Lee and Fraumini were two gentlemen in the in the 1960s, I believe, who noticed that there was a cohort of people that were very susceptible to to cancers. Both um, their family was susceptible to cancer and they themselves had sometimes multiple cancers, very unlucky. And those cancers, they noticed cancers of soft tissue, soft tissue sarcomas, uh, adrenal, adrenal cancer, CA for cancer, breast, breast cancer, lung sarcomas, brain, brain cancer, all of these cancers, these are just to name a few, but these cancers developed because of this underlying gene mutation. Now the, the gene I'm referring to is P53. Now P53 is what we refer to as a tumor suppressor, tumor suppressor gene. What I mean by that is, let's take a cell. Here's a, a cell, a very terrible cell, <laughs> um, and a nucleus here. And P53 finds its way to the nucleus. And in the nucleus, of course, we have our some DNA here. And the DNA is being transcribed to make proteins. It's being duplicated before the cell divides. And sometimes in that process, there's... There are, er there are mistakes, there are errors. Now when there's an error in the DNA transcription or copying, P53 is a molecule that, can, that recognizes this and then can halt the cell and, and then say, hey, wait a second, and let the other mechanisms in the cell go and fix the problem, or it can trigger apoptosis, meaning that program cell death. So P53 serves as a, as a gatekeeper in some ways for the cell to continue to progress and to duplicate. Now what happens if P53 is not working properly is the cell continues to duplicate without anybody checking, without, any, without a second check of whether that it's appropriate or not. So P53 is located on chromosome 17. So chromosome 17. And what's interesting about the P53 mutation in Lee Fraumini syndrome is it's not a somatic mutation, it's a germline mutation, meaning it is present from the very beginning. And it's autosomal dominant. Autosomal dominant. Which means it only requires one defective gene um, to have the effect of this syndrome, of the increased risk for all of these cancers. <clears throat> so let's take a, let's change colors again. And let's say this is an egg. And let's make a sperm here. This is a sperm. And inside there's chromosome 17. There's one copy of chromosome 17. And there's one copy of chromosome 17 here, presuming it's a normal, normal egg and normal sperm that are coming together. Let's say poor dad sperm has a has a mutation in the P53 gene. Well, that's unfortunate, but what is fortunate is that these two come together, the egg and the sperm, to make the complete cell, which will have two copies of chromosome 17. But one of them will have the defective P53 gene. But there is another gene, P53 gene, that is functional. And so as the cell grows and, and proliferates, that gene will pick up the slack. 
but eventually it will have an error just out of sheer probability there will be an error in the other gene at some point so this cell goes on to differentiate into all the different organs so before that's why this is a germline mutation because before the cell even differentiates into the organs such as the lung or the breast or the brain it already has a mutation that's making it susceptible to cancer so this is kind of where the the two hit hypothesis that that we refer to in cancer where there's one hit that's already happened from this germline mutation and all it takes is a second hit to make a cell susceptible to turning into a malignancy or to turning into a neoplasm or a cancer. So leaf raumini syndrome is, an, is really an illustration of um, a basic science concept of p53 genes, tumor suppressor gene, that has real clinical implications that if you get a germline muta mutation in this p53 gene, you end up having a having a phenotype, a leaf Raumini syndrome. And so I'm just reminded again and again how important the links are between the molecular and biologic chemistry and the way the cell works and how that can manifest itself into a clinical picture and into the people that we see um, in medicine um, on a regular basis.